Hello there. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make this um, three and four leaf Celtic knot personalised ring. Um, so there's a three leaf Celtic knot there on either side of the ring uh, and then a four leaf Celtic knot in the centre and in this instance we've put a Harrington Fonte on top of it. Um, so the, uh, the finished ring should look something like this. This is showing it um, after it's been created in Fluid Designer this is showing it in uh, NetFab where you need to repair it before you uh, send it to be printed. So uh, if we go to uh, Fluid Designer for 3D printing, um, if I just click on group, group library there, that'll refresh this uh, list. I'm going to use a Harrington font as the letter and uh, I'm just going to use the uh, capital letter A in this instance. Um, and I'm also going to use some Celtic knot ring patterns which can be purchased um, from our shop and uh, the ring patterns come with some other objects that you can get and there's a Celtic knot free link ring pattern uh, a 3D Celtic knot free ring pattern um, and uh, four leaf and five leaf and six leaf pattern and uh, we're going to use both the three and the four leaf pattern in uh, this instance I'll just drag one of those onto the workspace so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so that's the uh, four-leaf Celtic knot ring pattern and we're going to use that. <coughs> so first of all I'm going to go back to uh, startup and um, because this uh, ring is going to have some attachments at the top instead of using the old UK sizes object there, the completed ring, I'm going to use this one that's next to it and just drag and drop that onto the workspace. Um, now what is this object? Well if I just open up the panel here, I'll, I'll just switch on screencast keys as well so any key presses I make should be displayed down here. Um, what is this object? Well at the moment the default ring is in fact wrapped around this default ring size of H+. So if I go over to the modifiers here you can see that my uh, object is curved around the default ring H+. Now if I wanted to choose a different size, and I'm going to choose a different size, um, I'm going to use um, UK size P plus 18.14 millimeters, and what you'll see as I do that, my default ring, that's this object, is now wrapped around a different curve. So we can actually hide that curve there, because we're going to use the slightly larger size. We're going to use this object here, so my default ring is now wrapped around UKP+. Okay, so that's, that's what's happening uh, there. And um, so um, how is this ring actually created? Well, it's actually just a NURBS uh, path. And then what I've done is just extrude it. So if I press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode and just zoom in, what we've got here is a series of control points and essentially I just started off with a nerves path and each one millimeter I extruded it and if I just select the end there and if I just go to view and front view if I press E on the keyboard to extrude you can see E on the keyboard and extrude um, I'm snapping to one millimeter and what that's doing is changing the length of this so I've actually increased that size I know I changed it on the right hand side but it kind of works back to front here so if I press X on the keyboard to delete that X on the keyboard to delete that um, we've just chopped a little bit off there now we will need to adjust this later um, and we can do that just by going into edit mode but I'll leave it like it is at the moment um, and we'll add the Celtic knot patterns and then we'll tidy this up at the end and obviously how we tidy it up, how much we need to move it will depend upon what gap we fill at the top here. Okay so what I'm going to do now is from the rings folder I'm going to uh, go to file and append and I'm going to append the Celtic knot three ring, three leaf pattern that I showed you. Well I didn't show you the three leaf one, I opened the four leaf I'm going to use the three leaf first of all and go to object and I'm going to append the Celtic knot ring three leaf pattern. 
okay so there it is now that itself is wrapped around a default size in a diameter in the same way that um, our uh, ring here is and so I want to change that and I'm going to change it over here to uh, set the ring size as uh, UKP plus the same as our other object um, so P plus 18.1 and you'll see that that moves it so this particular object here now the inner diameter the default inner diameter we can actually just press X on the keyboard and delete that we don't need to use it um, now if we click on our Celtic knot pattern um, at the moment there are seven copies of this and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it back down to one copy and uh, I need to rotate this now because I want to fit this at the very end here so if I go back to my uh, original image there's the three leaf one look and I want to join it to the actual ring itself um, so I need to rotate this so if I go to the main information icon and uh, I think it's the Y direction and so you can see I'm rotating it here now because these are created with parametric equations what you tend to find is that angles are tend to be 30s 60s 45 90s those sorts of sizes they don't tend to be odd sizes so if I set that to 30 that's okay um, or almost okay but really I actually want this side at the other side here um, so I want two bits of the Celtic knot on this side and one bit on the other side so if I actually just add 180 degrees to that it will flip it right round um, now if I want I could actually set this back to zero by doing control A and applying the rotation not necessary to do that but that just sets that back to zero now what I want to do is to position this up here somewhere and to do that I need to move it so if I just go to top view and uh, if I go into edit mode so I press the tab key on the keyboard to go to edit mode um, now I'm not sure whether I move to move it to the left or the right let's see now I need to move it the other way so if I just move it across to here you can see I just need to move it a little bit further so I'm going to position it and I'm going to leave it there for the moment um, actually no I'm going to I'm going to move it perhaps just a little bit further um, now while that's in view one thing I should note here is the uh, the bottom of this object as long as it's in line with the red line there the x-axis um, when I come out of edit mode this um, three leaf Celtic knot pattern should be in line with the inside of the um, ring there now if I decide to change the thickness of this and I'm going to do that I can go do that over here at the moment it's uh, cross section one millimeter um, if I change it to one by two you see that looks really weird if I actually change it to two by one you'll see that that looks a lot better but you can see that now it's not fitting properly it's not on the inside of this curve so the way to resolve that is to go to the top view uh, go into edit mode and essentially I want to move the bottom of this object so that it's just touching the red line so if I just click on here I'll move it up in increments and you can see I need to move it up to two millimeters so I'm actually going to type two millimeters in there and I know two millimeters because I've set this as two millimeters thick now when I press the tab key to come out of edit mode there you can see that this nicely fits the bottom of that curve now um, so that's that's where I want it now what I want to do also is I want to mirror this on the other side so if I go to modifiers um, I'm going to stick to just one there I don't I don't want to have more of that because I'm going to put a, a four leaf pattern at the top but I want one at the other side so if I just add a mirror modifier uh, notice the x-axis is tick for me if it didn't appear we could try the other ones but the x-axis is ticked and that puts it in the right place there if it's not in the right place go back and check that these values are set to zero here if they're not then that uh, that could be what what the problem is so do control a and apply the rotation as I showed you before so that's uh, that's more or less where I want it now we could 
ju adjust it later but I think I'll, I'll leave it there for the moment now what I want to do is to put the four leaf pattern at the top of the ring here is a four leaf Celtic knot pattern underneath the letter A so I do the same thing basically uh, go to file and append um, I'm in Celtic knot three leaf pattern at the moment so I can come out of that and uh, I'm in the rings folder so I want Celtic knot ring I want the four leaf one object and append that from the library now this is essentially the same sort of thing um, I've got too many of this so uh, and the and the inner diameter is not set properly so first of all I'll set the inner diameter set the ring size to UKP plus again so I'm just scrolling down until I get to P plus set it at the same as the other ones so 18.14 um, we've got um, more copies of this than I need we've got four copies of this I'm going to stick with one copy um, and now again we need to uh, move this around so if I just go to view and top view so if I go tab key to go into edit mode and uh, I know I need to move it to the right this time uh, I think if I I need to zoom in perhaps and just move it a little bit more slowly Okay, and I've probably gone a bit too far there, so I'll just move it back. Now, with this particular one, it's really important that the centre of it is in line with the green, the y-axis there. So what I'm going to do, now I've got it nearly in the centre. If I go to view and back view, yeah, we've now got the um, blue axis, the z-axis here, rather than the green. So what I want to do is to centre this object on that axis so, so everything is nice and neatly centred you can see I've got a hole over here and not at this side so the way to do that is to zoom in now you need to press the tab key to go into edit mode now instead of moving it here with the x-axis what I want to do is move it up here now I'm not sure whether I need to move it to the right or the left I'll move it to 22.5 um, yeah that's actually moved it in the right direction you can see or, or no has it I'm not sure actually let me just try again let me just move it up to 23 and see where we are no I'm moving it the wrong direction there I'm moving it away so just move it back so I'll go back to 22 and go back the other way I'll go down to 21.5 um, so you can see I'm almost there at 21.5 so 21.4 um, so it's slightly to the right hand side now so if I do 24.8 millimetres and then press the tab key, um, not quite right there. So let me try for 6 millimetres. Have I gone the wrong way? No, still a little bit more. For 4 millimetres. I could just perhaps squeeze it down to 4.3. I'm being really pinicky here finicky I should say so that's lined it up very nicely look so I've got it really centered now um, okay so that's how you can fine-tune adjust it up here in edit mode rather than dragging it um, now what I want to do is to change the thickness and uh, I'm going to change this to 2 by 1 um, which is the same cross section as this but as you can see what happens is it's taken me off the center there now I forgot to delete that one I'll just get that one out of the way there um, now you could you could have this curve higher than the other one but I'm going to actually bring it back so if I go to view and top view and uh, if I press the tab key on the key oops I've got the wrong object highlighted I need to highlight the curve if I press the tab key you can see it's above the x-axis here so I need to move it down and I can move it down slowly over here back to zero and you can see when I do that it's now lined up nicely with the curve um, now what I could do now is uh, actually have a look in here and see where this the end of this is fitting and how, how do I like it uh, do I want to actually um, expand that out there and make it the same as the other side well the other side is is the hole is complete if you like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, increase this length here just to make it so that uh, it's it's um, the same appearance on both sides fill it in basically so if I go to view and top view 
so I want to move this side and uh, this thing works back to front so I need to go to the left hand side and if I press E on the keyboard to extrude and just extrude it one millimeter and then just press the tab key to go back out of edit mode and you can see that I filled in that hole there so we've got the same appearance on this side as we've got on the other side now. Um, now I could, if I wanted, uh, scale this down. I'm not going to because I think if you look at the size of it, it's only actually about 12 millimeters across there, so it's not particularly big. Um, so what I want to do now is to customize this, personalize it by putting a Harrington font letter A on here, as I showed you before. And uh, the Harrington font is in Patton's Alphabet Harrington font. So what I do is I go to File and Append, um, go up through the menu system until you get to the Groups folder. All the patterns and folders are in the Groups folder. Um, I want Harrington font, letter A, and it's always the object that you append. So it's Harrington font A. So there's my letter A. Um, I need to rotate it about the x-axis, um, so I can do R on the keyboard, X and minus 90 will rotate it. Um, I could have done it over here in the uh, panel, properties panel, and then I just need to move it up. And if I just go to view and top view, uh, and I'll just position it there, so we've got about a millimetre of overlap and a millimetre above. So our default objects are all two millimeters thick. You can see that here. So it's basically one millimeter by two millimeters deep. Now if I view it from the back, um, I could scale the size of this down to fit on the ring better. So if I do S on the keyboard and just scale it down. Now whenever you scale uh, curves in fluid design, you must always do Control A and apply the scale and notice the thickness the thickness will be reset there. So I've just uh, reduced the size of the letter A there by scaling it down, but always remember to do Control A and apply the scale. Um, now because all of these objects uh, have got slightly different cross sections, certainly this shaft of the ring has, um, you don't want to join them together as curves. So to join these different objects up, what you need to do is to go to Tools, Object Tools, and convert the letter A to a mesh. Tools, Object Tools, convert the uh, four-leaf object to a mesh. Tools, Object Tools, convert the three-leaf pattern to a mesh. And Tools, Object Tools, and convert the shaft to a mesh. And then if you hold down the Shift key and highlight all four objects, you can then go to Tools, Object Tools, and you can join them together. And uh, when you now export this as an OBJ file, so export it uh, as an OBJ file to the desktop, and uh, I called it Personalized Celtic Knot Ring 3 and 4 Leaf. Um, now, I did save it before, and as you can see, you can then take it to uh, Netfab Basic. Um, and you don't need to worry about using a, a boolean addition over here. You can just do tools, object tools, and join. And because we use parametric uh, smart uh, objects, uh, Netfab will repair this for you, and then you can upload it to Shapeways. Um, now, the inner diameter of this, if you were going to print this in silver or gold, you would need to check what the shrinkage amount is. So if there's a shrinkage of amount of about 3%, you would need to scale this up 3%. But I'm assuming that I'm going to print this um, in brass or bronze. And so you can keep the inner diameter as it is. So that's how you can create this personalized um, three and four leaf Celtic knot ring. Good luck.